the learning from that was just that we if you stay calm and we actually play good we will just smash a lot of those teams because i feel like we are just so good um as a team um i'm lucy we're the creator from peru Tomorrow, T1 will be playing against Team Liquid, and both teams have been known as the classic opponent for G2 in the past. So my question is, what are your thoughts in case of facing Team Liquid and being able to avenge Fnatic, or in case of facing T1 again after the 3-2 series of a few days ago? Um, honestly, I, I, I do want to beat uh, T1 I'm getting my rematch. I feel like this series, we, we should have won, and we could have won. Uh, we didn't, and uh, it's a bit bit disappointing from our end. Uh, we know we can win, uh, so we won a rematch T1. But if for whatever reason we would have to be playing against Team Liquid, I think that would also be nice for us to be able to revenge our European brothers, uh, Fnatic. So yeah. Thank you. Next question to one. So first of all, uh, which part do you think he makes the game like comfortable for you guys be able to get the victory against top esports? And also, what's our thoughts towards three six nine? Um, I mean, what makes the game so comfortable for us is I think that we we came into this tournament playing against a lot of really really good teams, and we are able to, you know, be stronger than them and outperform them. So in the first series against T one, I think the main reason we lost was because we were very overexcited uh, and. And like maybe maybe in doubt of like actually winning the series, um, and I think we started to calm down a lot more. Like I feel like the series today was a lot calmer, even though the level of the team is is very 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 strong. And I think that is the reason why we are doing so well. Um, and my thoughts on three six nine. I think three six nine played very well today, and also I think in general I I feel like three six nine is a player who plays very consistently good, and he will deny you like for example a lot of farm when when he, when he can and like he uses his jungle very well like in game two i i died a lot <laughs> or like i got pressured a lot by 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 his jungler and him and he played it very well he denied me a lot of creeps um yeah so for g2 you guys be able to get a 3-0 for the current two best of fives and for the game against t1 is so close and also how confident you are for now like be able to get the final trophy um, I mean, so so far we have won, yeah, two game, two two series best of five, uh, three zero, and I think that's a very nice feeling. That's a very good momentum for us, and I think teams need to respect that because if you win three games back to back, yeah, it's it's very good for us and against our competition because they see less games of us, and we will have to play against every single opponent because we lost in the first round. Uh, obviously, this gives us a lot of momentum. Uh, we want to take this series. We want to still. Stay humble, even though we we three out an LPL team. We we want to aim for, you know, winning the trophy, and for us it means having to beat every single team that comes our way, and it will not be an easy road at all. But I know we can do it. I know we have the skill to do it, and I know we have the confidence to do it. So my hopes are definitely very high. Um. I think a lot of people would say that G2 got a lot of advantages today from their drafts. And I think that's been something G2 has been known for for more than five years now. Uh, what do you think makes G2 so much more capable of utilizing different picks in draft and different directions in draft, uh, like different comps and stuff entirely than other teams? Um, well, I think uh, mainly like the biggest number one reason of teams not picking off meta stuff is because it is just not the meta. So people are scared that, oh, when I pick this champion and it looks bad, he, he will definitely get a lot of bad feedback, right? And it's the same, like it's the same for us still, like we still have this pressure on our, our backs and we know that, oh, if you pick this and it's very bad, um, it's going to look very, very bad. And it's not like we don't have these picks. Like we have it, we have it that the picks that are also bad. So like um, in scrims, for example, we we love to try out stuff. We love to see what is winning. And uh, a good example is last split that we pulled off the Zach, the Rek'Sai, the Twisted Fate. We were like the very first ones to play it. Um, and the same goes with Ivern. Uh, we were always like the first teams to play it. And that is because we have a lot of confidence in our champion. We practice these champions a lot. And we kind of define that meta. That is our meta. That is our identity as a team. And obviously, 
there's players who rather go to play the same champions that are meta for several different kind of years. For example, as a top laner, a lot of people play Nora or Renekton as their staple picks. And for me, as as a top laner, you wouldn't say like Broken Blade is someone who plays a lot of Renekton, plays a lot of Nara. And yeah, I think it's basically our staff and players are just these kind of players, you know. Sometimes you have these type of players who are creative and are able to pull these things off. Um, and I'm very glad that I am in such a team. Next question, Don Jake. Uh, hello, can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was just uh, testing my mic. Hi, Mr. Broken Blade. Uh, lovely to speak with you. Uh, there's been, I mean, I'm sure you're aware in your long career that narratives can shift very quickly. I think a lot of people were sort of contesting the idea that you're incapable of maybe uh, competing with some of the Eastern tops. I think after the last Worlds, that was uh, something that was floating around. You certainly seem to have challenged that, uh, this uh, international tournament. I just wanted to ask, uh, was that a misconception the entire time? Do you feel like you've personally stepped up your game. I wondered if you could touch on that a little bit more and also give us a brief update on your Cactus Requies. Thank you. Brilliant question. Um, yeah, I, I think it was fair for most people to, to, you know, state this statement. I, I believe the reason why people are saying it is because I was the only top laner in Europe that consistently made it to the international tournament. So they had to compare me with me and not with someone else. Uh, Definitely this year, I have pr practiced my laning phase a lot. Uh, I have mentioned that I have worked with Afari a lot throughout the start of the year. Um, right now, I'm not working with him anymore. Um, but yeah, I've taken a lot uh, of things from him and uh, the ideas and like creative talks we had it just made me realize how much more I can do uh, in lane. I feel like my game IQ is very high outside of laning phase and... Uh, I think the reason why I could never use it or could never look good in these international tournaments was because I could just never get out of lane ahead or even. Um, and that is a fair statement. I feel like this narrative is bad now. Um, but that doesn't mean I, I should stop working. I feel like I'm just at the beginning of something great. And my cactus is doing very great. Thank you. Next question from Kodigo Esports. Did the loss against Team One influence uh, G2's evolution for the series versus PSG and then now Top Esports? It definitely impacted it uh, a lot. Uh, we feel like we had a lot of, you know, uh, overexcitement going into the series. Uh, we were very hyped before going into the series, very hyped in the middle of the series. Um, and we knew that, okay, after the series, and it was a very, very close series. We are, you know, we are good, you know, we can play good League of Legends. So we were having talks of like, oh, let's just stay calm. Let's have a good game plan. Let's talk with each other, you know, and not scream at each other. And I feel like these games are much, much easier to play when there's not a lot of overexcitement. Like uh, there was many moments in the game where I'm like playing Zach and I'm eating forward, even though the play is over. And like we're walking up against Ari, who is like hiding behind walls when the play is already over a long time ago and stuff like that. And the learning from that was just that we, if you stay calm and we actually play good, we will just smash a lot of those teams because I feel like we are just so good um, as a team. And we have a lot of good understanding of how the game works nowadays uh, compared to last year. I feel like last year we played a lot of strong early game and then we tried to snowball the game of that. And now I think our game understanding is equal, if not better than the teams in this tournament. Next question from Cloud Sidkey. Uh, G2 has been leveling up throughout this MSI. How have you guys been improving in such a short amount of time? Um, well, again, I think it's not as much about improving. Like, I feel like we came in with a high level uh, in this tournament. Obviously, a lot of people did not anticipate us doing great or good against uh, Eastern teams. There was a lot of narratives about, yeah, G2 is just going to get stomped again. And us in G2, we, we built rosters to win internationally and yes uh, the last years were failures and this year i i would hope i would like to believe it's different we are aiming every single year i was on g2 I, I was aiming to to be the best in the world um 
and we have brought in Duffman. I think Duffman has been a key to understanding how League of Legends is played in a high level. He has brought in a lot of special stuff. He talks about a lot of staples in the game and the biggest staple, for example, is just minion waves. I feel like we started, it's like such a simple thing, but like minion waves are just there every single game. And last year we didn't talk about them as much. And this year we understand how things work much, much better than last year's. And I'm, yeah, again, I'm very grateful for that. I feel like this opportunity, we just can't give away. Uh, I feel like everyone is, is really doing very hard to understand everything very well and practice very hard we didn't take a single day off yet in this tournament so we're looking to really really win this one all right we'll take two more questions uh next question from game k g2 played excellent today do you have any words or thoughts about the t1 versus team liquid match tomorrow and then second part of the question did g2 use ivern specifically for jackie love is it something you prepared beforehand uh well, not not really. I mean, Yike is known to be very good on Iron. Um, let me go on the first question though. First, uh, I think the T1 against TL series, from my perspective, it's very strongly T1 favorite. But it looks like T1 is having some some trouble right now, and and TL is obviously just kind of came by winning against Fnatic, so they are gonna have high hopes. They're gonna come in confident. Um, and I think if Appa. <laughs> Can get into Faker's head by all shitting. Uh, maybe, maybe there's some stuff going on. You know, I I do think there is a chance for for NA, but they, obviously they are the underdogs. I I would hope T1 wins because I want to get my rematch against T1. I feel like it would be very sad if he didn't rematch them. And then, uh, yeah, I I feel like it was sad. But but I'm open to playing against T TL as well. I feel like they can be dangerous. Obviously they. Yeah, not to be underestimated, they beat our, our bros in uh, in Europe, the Fnatic. So, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. And for the uh, Ivern, I, I think it was because it was played before in Misfits, maybe? I'm not sure I get the reference. I saw a tweet earlier. But yeah, I mean, Ivern just looked very strong in this game, and Yike was smurfing so hard on, on the Ivern. And I think we comboed very well with Camille, for example, and Cassante, uh, which Ivern kind of wants, so... I uh, was very happy with that pick. And final question from Pedro Romero. The last time G2 defeated an LPL squad in a best of five was that famous 2018 Worlds quarterfinal between G2 and RNG. For you guys to win today against Top Esports, what does that say about the improvement that G2 has undergone the pat with this squad for the past two years? I mean, it's been uh, honestly an amazing journey. I, I am very grateful I get to wake up uh, every day to to play with those guys. Uh, I feel like there's so much passion in, in one single room with these guys. I, I I wake up very grateful to be able to play with those guys and, and also share my opinions and stuff. Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, winning today means a lot. It is also a proof of our hard work and our efforts to coming back and getting back the the skill that we have missed, the gap that was so big to close uh, over the years. And we want to obviously make Europe strong. We want to we want to inspire people. We want to inspire the European players to, you know, to do their best. Because if we can do it, any other European player can do it. And I hope to lift the MSI trophy so we can inspire a lot of people in Europe and just keep winning year after year inspire the west too i think as a whole the west as well yes Cheers. all right thanks blurk and blade thank we're you. done today thank you three zero that was incredible oh my god i cannot wait i'm sad that i didn't get any tes interviews the entire tournament and they're out but man i'm going to be asking for d2 interviews every single time if you don't want to miss it hit that subscribe button